I'm Richard McCullough here. I'm the founder of the Storytext System and Write Better Fiction Faster. Today I want to share some ideas with you on what I call the invisible subject. One of the biggest problems with writing, with studying the subject of writing, let alone talking about it, is that the subject is largely invisible. <laughs> let me explain. You see, we think that we can understand the subject of writing because, you know, we can pick up a book and we can turn it over in our hands. We can look at it. We can open the book and read the words on the page. We think we can look at the subject of, look at the subject because we can sit down and pick up paper and pen and scratch out words. We think that the subject is visible, that it can be weighed and measured and evaluated because we can not only put words on paper or a computer screen, but that other people years and miles away can read those words and even have some understanding of what we wrote. We think that writing and reading are subjects that are well understood. <laughs> but this is far from the truth. You see, in all my years studying the subject of writing, all the books I've read on the subject, I can't remember any mention of the reader. I mean, I'm sure that the word reader must have appeared once or twice in relation to things like, oh, hooking the reader with the opening of one's book. Uh, but I don't remember any author discussing what exactly any reader was doing with the words they were reading. And in fact, I don't remember anyone ever giving more than passing comment regarding readers at all. So here's the question. How can any serious study of the subject of writing exist without taking into equal, if not greater, consideration what was happening on the other end of that communication system. Writers create words and commit them to paper. Readers pick up those pieces of paper and do something with those words. But what exactly are they doing with those words? Does anyone actually know? Okay, look, we're all taught to read at an early age. At first it's difficult because we have to sound out those letters. And from form them into words and then string those words together to make sentences. And oh, we have to memorize yet additional, an additional collection of symbols called punctuation marks in order to parse those sentences correctly. So we have ideas in the mind of the writer translated into letters and word symbols, annotated with punctuation symbols, all arranged in a prescribed format. This we call writing. Then we have all that symbology being visually scanned by a person and somehow turned back into ideas. This we call reading. And the working theory is that the reader understands the ideas that the writer has encoded in the symbols. And this decoding takes place for many people at hundreds of words a minute. You know, which is faster than most people can type. What I find most curious is not that this coding and decoding takes place, but there that there is so much attention on the coding end and so very little attention paid to the decoding end of things, especially by writers, the ones that are doing the coding. One would think that writers would be profoundly interested in not only what readers were doing with their words, but how the process was actually performed. But I can't remember ever having read anything about 
how the mind of readers actually worked, let alone how writers could do a better job of working with that mind on the other end of the writer-reader relationship. That's part of what I mean when I say that this subject is actually invisible. Example number one. You see, the writer is not doing, dealing with any, any really real things. He's only dealing with symbols. Example number two. Likewise, the reader is not dealing with anything real, but only symbols of things. And then it gets far worse and even more incomprehensible when we realize that to discuss either the mind or actions of either the writer or the reader, we are forced to use symbols to discuss the mechanisms that are invisible. Not only is the mind invisible, but the sequences in which thoughts are formed and modified and expressed are invisible. Now, with the exception of a scant trail that might be hinted at with a collection of symbols scribbled in haste upon a page. Even more mysterious still is the decodification process whereby any such scant trail can be scanned and interpreted. So we see that the process of reading is every bit as mysterious and uncodified as the process of writing because both deal exclusively with symbols of things rather than things themselves, which makes both subjects invisible. All of that is bad news. What I believe is an accurate portrayal of the lack of understanding of the writer-reader relationship. That is, until now. I believe that I have discovered what's actually going on between the writer and the reader, and therefore what actually makes the relationship possible. In fact, if what I wrote previously, what I already explained to you by way of, of ideas going from idea to symbol to symbol to back to idea, what, what was actually going on, I don't think mankind would have ever gotten out of the cave because as a system of communication, it's not only too slow, but too prone to error and misinterpretation all of which would be deadly in a hostile environment. Then we have the problem of innovation. Innovation relies on new ideas. That means the conception of an idea for which there is no current symbol. Take, for example, the wheel. Imagine the first guy that got the idea of a wheel. How does he explain this, this wheel thing to anybody else? There are no word symbols for this thing. Oh, okay, yes, yes. He could demonstrate his idea as long as it was a thing, something physical that could be demonstrated. However, a sophisticated culture requires many ideas that have no physical manifestation, or at least not with a mere word symbol or two, Take, for example, this short list of ideas that require a large number of words to communicate, such as truth or justice, beauty, love, hate, greed, etc. Oh, and let's not forget that granddaddy of them all, God. These and many other others are big ideas. These require a great number of word symbols to communicate and some with many thousands of words attributed to them are still not universally or adequately agreed upon. Now this interestingly enough leads us back to one if not the most important aspect of storytelling. The storyteller you see makes manifest through illustration, that which has no physical existence. Simply said, storytellers through their stories can show or illustrate many things which cannot otherwise be seen, let alone contemplated. Therefore, one could say that not only are stories and storytelling an invisible subject, 
but their purpose is illustrating invisible subjects.